Hello, my name is Julie McLeod and I have the honour of being the chair of the 2021 Emmett Leahy Award Committee. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this presentation of the award to Laura Miller. Whilst there are some downsides to a virtual event, especially for the winner, Laura, one of the benefits is that many past winners are able to join us today from across the world, quite literally. From the Hawaiian Islands through to mainland USA, Canada, the UK, where I am, Europe, and as far east of me as India, where it's very late at night. We're also joined by Mike Quinn, CEO of the award sponsor Preservica, and some of his colleagues. I want to thank you all for being here and making this a truly international event befitting of an international award. Now, whilst everyone joining live today knows who Emmett Leahy was and why there's an award bearing his name, not everyone who watches the recording of the event may know. And so for their benefit, let me briefly explain. Emmett Joseph Leahy was born in 1910 in Washington, DC. He became an archivist at the US National Archives in the mid 1930s and was assigned to work as a special examiner. His role was to identify records with no permanent value or historic interest that could be disposed of following approval from the US Congress. Leahy and his colleagues quickly recognized that the lack of any systematic management of federal records. Whoops. That's us. Made it very difficult um, <laughs> to distinguish between records of temporary value. It's nice to have extra people in the background now and again. And those of permanent archival back, uh, value. So he therefore sought and gained approval to establish a committee on the reduction of records, which Leahy chaired. He analysed practices of European archives in publications and took a six month tour of archives around the world to learn about programmes to reduce the volume of public records being created. I think he was a very lucky man. His seminal article, Reduction of Public Records, was then published in the American Archivist. He and his peer, Philip Brooks, initiated activities called records administration that eventually became records management. In 1941, Leahy became the director of records administration for the Department of Navy. He was an evangelist for the use of microfilm to reduce the volume of paper records. And in 1945, he resigned his commission to enter the private sector, joining Remington Rand as national sales manager for microfilm. Two years later, he left to establish the National Records Management Council to promote and improve records management. In 1948, his recognition as a records management expert resulted in him being invited to join the Hoover Commission on the reorganization of the executive branch of government and to head a task force on the reduction of records. A significant outcome of that task force was the enactment of the Federal Records Act of 1950, which for the first time established a comprehensive records management program for the US federal government. In the 1950s, the early 1950s, Leahy set up his own records management consultancy, Leahy and Company, and a very successful record storage company. He died suddenly in 1964, and he was aged only 53. But he'd made such a significant impact on the records and information management profession that three years later, Rod Exelbert, who was editor of the newly formed information management magazine, decided he would use the magazine as a platform for the creation of an award to honor him. The Emmett Leahy Award for Outstanding Contributions to the records and information management profession. It's quite some title. The award recognizes an individual whose contributions and accomplishments have had a major impact on the profession. And I emphasize that. It's been pre presented annually since 1967 with only one break in the 1980s. And its recipient is selected by the Emmett Leahy Award Committee comprising the, the immediate past 10 award winners. 
I hope this brief account of Emmett Leahy illustrates the significance of the award, which has over time become an international honour, as the roll call of former winners joining us today demonstrates. You can find more on the award website, the address for which is at the start of the recording. So with that, I'd like to invite Anne Thurston, Dr. Anne Thurston, the 2007 recipient to share her remarks about this year's recipient, Laura Miller. Anne, let's unmute you first and then um, you can go ahead. So let me see. And you're unmuted. Yes. Great. Um, there, great. Go ahead, Anne. Thank you. Well, as Julie said, um, the Emmett Leahy Award focuses on professional excellence and on its impact in the field of information management. But for me, the impact is always greater, greatest when it's motivated by a generous spirit, by a deep wish to share knowledge and to empower others. This year's award winner embodies these qualities. So I'm delighted to welcome, to join Julie in welcoming Laura Miller as the newest member of the Emmett Leahy Award Committee. I met Laura in 1992. I was in London working jointly for the International Records Management Trust and for University College London, when Terry Eastwood, who was then the chair of archival studies at the University of British Columbia, contacted me to suggest that I meet Laura Miller, who he said would be coming to London uh, to University College to pursue her PhD. Elizabeth Shepherd and I were asked to jointly supervise the degree and through the process of working with Laura, it quickly became clear to us that, that the depth of Laura's intelligence, her skill level and her commitment and values would make her an important profession, important asset to the records profession. Over the nearly 30 years that I've known her, Laura's skills and her ability to apply them have grown steadily, while her values and her integrity have remained rock solid. Laura is endlessly generous with her knowledge. Her focus is on raising awareness of the value of evidence and on the crucial role that records, archives, and data must play in building accountability, documenting identity, and preserving memory. She's deeply committed to increasing the profile of records and archives management, which she sees as essential if actions and decisions are to be grounded in sources of fact. Laura is committed to helping build a world where decisions are based on reliable documentary evidence rather than on opinion or misinformation. Much of Laura's work as an independent consultant has focused on Canada, where she's address, addressed virtually all aspects of the records and archives management profession. For instance, she played a significant role by delivering workshops in the Canadian North as a com community archives consultant for the Yukon Territory. She traveled to remote communities to provide hands-on experience hand on records and archives management to dozens of heritage associations, First Nations governments, museums, and local governments. In Alberta, <clears throat> a province heavily invested in the oil industry, she focused on developing strategies, plans, policies, procedures, and tools for managing all sources of evidence, emphasizing the transition to digital record keeping. In Ontario, she supported open data and open government initiatives. While in British Columbia, she worked with the College of Registered Nurses and later with the College of Pharmacists to develop policies and procedures for digital records management. Laura's international work has been no less impressive. Between 1994 and 1999, she played a key role <clears throat> as managing editor in developing the management of public sector records study program with the International Records Management Trust. This was followed by the electronic records, um, by training in electronic records program, which she completed in 2009. These programs were global in scope 
and were prepared with the aim of supporting countries for professional educational tools in the fields in the field of records and information management were difficult to obtain. The programs covered all phases of the records continuum, as well as the application of the principles and practices to financial, human resource, hospital, and court records. They included self-study training modules, country-based case studies, and good practice manuals. <clears throat> All of the materials were made available globally free of charge. In 2014 and 2015, Laura worked with the government of the, Hong, of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region to develop and lead a strategic initiative in electronic records and archives management planning. The initiative also included a study of international good practice in records and archives management, which was aimed at improving records management within the Hong Kong government, but also uh, supporting enhanced democracy and public awareness. Two major change initiatives illustrate Laura's increasingly significant international role in records and, and information management. In 2013, following Hurricane Sandy, the UNESCO Records and Archives Division asked her to conduct a needs and risk assessment for records and archives management to help the UN continue to, to work in an emergency. Laura developed a suite of short, clear, plain language guidance sheets to enable UN staff to identify the basic actions needed to improve records management and protect records in an emergency. This guidance is still used extensively in UN offices around the world. In 2020, the World Bank Group Archives asked Laura to help modernize the record keeping guidance that the bank provided for mem member countries and clients. She designed a records management roadmap and a practical plain language suite of assessment tools and guidance to help governments and public sector organizations implement strategic improvements in records and archives management. Officially launched in July 2020, the roadmap has been heavily used ever since. And then this year, UNESCO asked Laura to develop a similar package prioritizing improvements for an effective and speedy transition to digital records management. Um, so that to, in order to increase the capacity of the UN headquarters and its offices around the world. Laura has demonstrated her commitment to sharing knowledge in the manage, management of records and archives globally as a member of the editorial boards of the Association of Canadian Archivists and the Australian Society of Archivists, the International Council on Archives Program Commission and the ICA's Diversity Working Group. She's a member of UNESCO's Canadian Advisory Committee for the Member of the World. In all these activities, she has worked to foster mentorship for new professionals coming up behind her. Laura's most significant uh, effort to date has been writing a matter of facts, the value of evidence in an information age. Begun in 2013 and published in 2019, um, this immensely consequential book addresses her core message about the essential role that reliable documentary evidence plays in accountability, identity, and memory. I feel certain that the book is destined to become a classic text for the records and archives profession. Toward the end of the book, Laura notes, I have a vision call it naive or, or idealistic, but it is a vision that drives my work as a record keeping professional. I want to live in a society that is enlightened, civilized, democratic, respectful, and self-aware. In order to achieve such a society, one that's free, democratic, respectful, and self-aware, people need a recorded memory. They need to be able to create a collective consciousness from unfettered access to the evidence of communications, actions, and transactions. Open and easy access um, 
to sources of trustworthy evidence helps to support democracy, transparency and accountability and to foster a sense of personal and collective identity. Laura, at this stage, as Julie said, we would normally love to give you the Emmett Leahy Award plaque, but in these virtual times, we will be sending it to you by post and hopefully posting it on the website. Um, I want to invite you now, Laura, to share your thoughts about what you've learned during your long and remarkably varied career. Over to you. Thank you so much, Anne, for those very kind words. I would love to receive the plaque in person, especially if it we're sitting there in Kauai with you. Uh, that would be quite a joy. But as it is, we work virtually and uh, eventually we'll all be together in person. I am honored to receive the Emmett Leahy Award for 2021. As a records and archives consultant, I delight not only in the fact of this award, but also in its association with a distinguished professional, Emmett Leahy, who also worked as a consultant. People often make assumptions about the life of a consultant. Some assumptions are optimistic. We are swimming in income. We always fly business class. Some are less generous. We're just in it for the money or we can't make it in the real world. None of those assumptions is true. Though I have flown business class, but only when I had enough air mile points to negotiate an upgrade. Emmett Leahy was a consultant and so am I. He was an educator and so am I. He served on committees, wrote articles for professional journals and advised governments and businesses in his own country and around the world. And as Anne has explained with those kind remarks, so do I. I don't think Emmett Leahy was in it for the money any more than I am. I think that he and I both approached our careers with a similar sense of mission. Perhaps his came from his Irish Catholic background, which is an ancestry we also share. And imagine this, I also discovered that at different times, both Emmett Leahy and I lived in Darien, Connecticut. How spooky is that? In 1953, Leahy established a business, part consultancy, part nonprofit institution. His vision was to provide professional advice to records creators and education and training for records professionals. He also set up a series of record centers around the United States. Leahy knew that keeping valuable evidence meant providing, protecting critical documentation while destroying miles and miles of waste. As a journalist wrote about him in 1960, Leahy provides the cubby holes for storage to satisfy the hoarding urge but continually preaches the virtues of throwing files away. Leahy died in 1964 at the too young age of 53. 25 years later in 1989, Anne Thurston established the records, International Records Management Trust, a UK-based consultancy that supported records management services around the world. Like Leahy, Anne's vision was to support accountability and transparency through the effective management of records. Anne and her team provided training, education and research in records and archives management to uphold civil and human rights, to reduce poverty and to strengthen democracy. I was honored to work as a consultant with the trust for many years. My time with the trust helped me crystallize this vision of the importance of records, archives and other sources of evidence as tools for accountability, identity, and memory. The experience also reminded me that one of the greatest benefits of consulting is not dispensing advice, but learning and growing from those you encounter along the way. I lived in England for four years, completing my PhD under Anne and Elizabeth's supervision, and then working with Anne and her team at the Trust. As a student, I was adopted by Michael and Barbara Roper. Michael had retired as the UK's keeper of public records, and he and Barbara invited me to live with them. When I completed my doctorate and I could afford to pay rent, they helped me furnish my apartment, which was almost literally across the street from them. Today, my husband and I are the Canadian branch of the extended Roper family. And as I give this speech, Michael's grandson, James Phillips, Phillips is here in British Columbia with us now, 
our first post lockdown British visitor. How great is that? On my return from England to Canada in 1996, I continued consulting, working with the trust and other agencies, as Anne outlined, from churches and local community groups to First Nations bands and national governments. I also took on teaching and volunteer opportunities as my travel schedule allowed. And one of my most satisfying experiences has been to help expand the International Council on Archives mentorship program, which involved pairing newcomers to the profession with mid-career and senior professionals. My vision for the mentorship program was not to create a teacher-student relationship, but to bring mentors and new professionals together as traveling companions helping to build a community of international support. I've been told that many of the pairs have developed into personal friendships, and I love the feeling of being a matchmaker. Indeed, some of the most rewarding connections in my own career have been with my students and with newer colleagues. As I give thanks today, let me specifically acknowledge my chickens, as I call them. The list of names is so long, it would be faster to read out my Christmas card list. Instead, let me just mention two names as the most recent in my ever-growing group of valued colleagues and friends. Jennifer Nangreve in Canada and Laura Luca in the UK have each helped me with projects during the pandemic when in-person meetings were impossible and a second set of eyes, ears, and brains was essential to help me keeping the projects moving smoothly. I would have been lost without the help of Jen and Laura, who are just the latest two in a 35 year long line of students and mentees who have helped me to succeed in my consulting career. I cannot know why the Leahy Committee decided to give me this award. I accept it with gratitude and humility. But let me tell you why I think this award is important, not for me, but as a message about the future of records and archives management in a digital world. By giving this award to me, the committee is recognizing the work of someone who has worked to bridge the gap between data, records, and archives. My focus is on evidence writ large as a tool for memory, accountability, and identity, and as a source of truth and trust. In my 2019 book, A Matter of Facts, which Anne mentioned, my goal was to explain for the public the importance of documentary products as sources of memory and evidence. One of the most important messages in my book is that archives don't just exist. Records don't just exist and data don't just exist. We must all work together from the creator of data to the custodian of archives to protect evidence, whatever its form or shape, if we are to provide the factual basis for decision-making and understanding. Would there have been a global resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement if a bystander had not recorded the murder of George Floyd in May 2020? Would the Brexit vote have changed if someone had stopped Cambridge Analytica and Facebook from disseminating false information? Will we find out the truth of the January 6th insurrection in Washington if we do not have access to social media posts or text messages or videos? To protect such evidence in a digital age, we cannot wait for data to become records or records to become archives. We must all act now and we must all act together. My vision for the future is one of collaboration, cooperation and greater public understanding. Let me offer this example as a parallel. Back at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, when we were all banging pots and pans to thank hospital staff and others in the United States and Canada and around the world. We were cheering everyone in the healthcare system, the network of service providers who work together to deliver healthcare to everyone in society. If something good can come from COVID-19, it is greater public awareness of weaknesses in the healthcare systems around the world and the importance of supporting the work involved in keeping people alive, healthy, and safe for as long as possible. Like the healthcare system, people. 
and that system is in crisis. We read every day about this crisis with news of cyber attacks, privacy breaches, lost data, missing records, whistleblower accounts of excessive power by private sector agencies and social media companies. They are holding control of our data and our evidence. Archivists will not fix this problem alone. Records managers will not fix this problem alone. And the public will not fix this problem alone. We must work as a team. Success will come when we strengthen record keeping laws and regulations, build ethical frameworks into the use of information technologies, and raise public understanding of the importance of evidence for accountability, identity, and memory. Success will come when people take their own documentary evidence seriously and support the work of professionals. By presenting me with the Leahy Award, I like to think that the committee is acknowledging that the differences between data, records, and archives should not get in the way of our efforts to build a strong and authentic evidence base. The award encouraged all of us, all of us to do away with labels and instead to turn our attention to a larger mission. Emmett Leahy was known as a records management consultant. He worked to educate government officials and the public on the importance of records for efficiency and accountability but he also sought to preserve valuable archives while removing mountains of waste. His career, short as it was, was about more than records management and about more than archives management. And Thurston is known as a records management consultant. She has worked to educate government officials, donor agencies, and the public on the importance of records for integrity and trustworthiness, especially in the public sector. Her career has been about more than records management and about more than archives management. I am known as a records management consultant and as an archivist and as a writer, educator, and editor. I have worked to protect evidence in digital databases and in century old documents. And I have worked to educate and raise public awareness. I have attempted to communicate a vision of a world where evidence, whatever its form, is valued, protected, and shared. My career is about more than records management and about more than archives management. In truth, though, my mission is not to preserve data or records or archives. My mission, as Anne commented, is to help foster a society where people value their individual and collective memory, where they care about where they came from and where they are going, where they see themselves as part of a continuum and part of a community where they value and respect themselves and each other. The protection of evidence is just a means to an end. The end is personal and collective awareness, respect and honor. Integrity, authenticity and accountability are not just records values, they are life values. Like Emmett Leahy, like Anne Thurston, and I am sure like many of the other recipients of this award, award I was not drawn to this profession for the money or the prestige. And I must pause here to acknowledge with deepest gratitude that I have been able to live a truly precarious life thanks to my dear husband who provides for me financially, emotionally, and with vast reserves of patience. My focus on evidence is intended deliberately to help us bridge the gap between data, records, and archives. My hope is that people will hear the word evidence and appreciate and respect the role and value of records, archives, and data, along with myriad other forms of evidence as the foundations of trust and truth, accountability, identity, and memory. Grateful as I am for this award, my greatest joy comes from the relationships that have developed over nearly four decades, from those who supported and mentored me to those I help to support and mentor now. I reap the rewards of my career when I receive a Christmas card from a former student, enjoy lunch with a client turned friend, or stop for tea with a colleague when I am passing through town, even if passing through town involves an overnight layover in Johannesburg or Singapore. Leahy Award recipients Anne Thurston, Julie McLeod, Adrian Cunningham, and John McDonald have all come to visit us at our Sunshine Coast home. We almost got Vicki Lemieux here before the pandemic hit. You are all more than welcome. We are not just professional colleagues, we are a community, and my home is open to all of you. 
I thank you for this award. I thank you for the opportunity to continue the professional and personal relationships that have been so important to me over the past four decades. My best wishes to you all. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, words that are very worthy of um, an Emmett Leahy Award winner. And thank you also to Anne Thurston for giving those of us who perhaps don't know um, all of the detail of Laura's background, such insight into why she was a worthy winner, why she is a worthy winner and why the committee chose her. So let's see if we can unmute everyone um, and perhaps we can um, all congratulate Laura in perhaps not with them, um, uh, pans and pots and drums that we did through um, the um, pandemic for the health services, but with the usual form of a clap of hands. Congratulations. Congratulations. And so if we perhaps mute everyone again, um, I will introduce our final speaker. And as I said, Mike Quinn, you are last, but absolutely certainly not least on our list of speakers. But I'd like you, our CEO of um, Preservica, who sponsored the award, to say a few words, make a few remarks about this year's um, award um, and award winner. So let me see if we can unmute you. Mike. Oops. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes, good. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Julie. Um, actually, Julie, I've got a short video I want to show, it's about two minutes long. So if I share my screen, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, um, kind, of, I think it's kind of very relevant and it will celebrate something that uh, Laura shared with us. Okay, let's <laughs> just see if we can share uh, your well, screen. Um, I, I think I can, if you if allow me, to, I, can, I can do that, I think. Yeah, I do, okay. I can do that from my end. But uh, let me say a few, few words first and then I'll, I'll do that. But first of all, let me please add my congratulations to Laura on uh, your Emmett Leahy um, uh, election to the committee and, and your award. Um, it's, I, I'm always humbled uh, when I turn up at these, uh, at, at this particular award ceremony because everyone here um, acts to the highest principles and amazing ethics and commitments to a higher purpose that is very rare to see in other professions. I have to say in this profession, especially, I know there are many professions that aspire to greater things, but this profession seems to amaze each time. And Laura, as, as this year's award winner, uh, you are right up there amongst your peers uh, in this committee. Your advocacy, mentorship, authorship in preserving memory, both at a national, international and personal level are just truly amazing, truly, truly amazing. So thank you very much for uh, all, all the great feats you performed and the, and the services you provide. We love consultants, by the way. I don't, I've got, not got a bad thing to say about consultants. In fact, um, Laurie Ashley, who's my colleague here, is a consultant, and Laurie knows what I think of her anyway. So great thing about being a consultant is you get to work with lots of people and share your knowledge with lots of folks as well. So that's, that's great. Let me share my screen, because one of the things I wanted to talk to you very briefly, if, you, if you'll uh, allow me to do that, was um, tell me when you can see this. Are you all seeing this? Yes, I can see it, Mike. Yeah. So one of the things you touched on, um, in, and, and, and you're talking about, and, and I'm sure you're, um, I, I must admit, I haven't read your book, A Matter of Facts, Value of Evidence in the Information Age, but I'm sure, I'm sure um, you talked to, to this, um, Laura, is that um, in the world that we live in today, the information age, did, our digital memory is increasingly fragile and it's getting more and more complex all the time. And as an archival and records management community committed to the future, we're now facing a new set of challenges. Uh, last year, Dinesh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, last year's award winner, is doing great things to forward digital preservation 
uh, around the world, and many of us I know in this group are, are thinking in terms of that. But um, the problem we face is there's new challenges that are hitting us all the time in terms of the fragility of digital information, whether that's long-term information that is becoming obsolete or evidence that is sprawling across many systems, or increasingly now female digital media. And I know that Jason Barron, Jason, you've talked about a lot of this at conference, the, the particular challenge of, of reliance on social media um, uh, that you refer to as well, Laura, in terms of the events of the 6th of, 6th of January, for example, uh, last year. Um, if we needed a reminder about how fragile uh, this information is, uh, just last month was the anniversary of 9-11, the 20th anniversary, and this was a headline uh, amongst many um, recognising those world changes which was very sad to see that already in the last 20 years, some of the most iconic news footage and digital records associated with 9-11 have been lost forever because of technology obsolescence. So as the custodians of the records for generations to come, we really need to think about how we manage this in a better way. This year and last year, um, preserving the digital's world's digital memory became more important than ever. And um, we face particular challenges in working remotely. And I wanted to share with you um, a video that actually we shared at our user group uh, last year, but I, I still think it's relevant. So although it says 2020 on it, it's still relevant to 21. But the good news is that there are folks who are doing things about preserving our digital memory now and I just wanted to share this with you because it particularly plays to the points you made, Laura, about the importance to society of recognising the importance of, of evidence, archival evidence, and increasingly digital evidence. So let me play this video for you. It's about two minutes long. Apologies if there's an advert that comes up first. There is an advert. So let me get rid of this. Is, is spread positivity. Okay. I'm going to skip the ad there.
fighting with Google to hire top oh, software excuse me, let me get rid of that. Let me get money? rid of that. Big tech when you can find I'm just trying to get rid of this at the moment. Uh, are you seeing me or are you seeing something else at the moment? We're seeing you. Okay, all right. So just to, um, I, there's reasons to be hopeful. There's a, a, a generations of digital archivists now doing exactly the thing, Laura, that you were advocating. And uh, we're living in momentous times at the moment and the digital evidence that we're producing now, we need to preserve. And with the advocacy and education support that you and the rest of this committee providing, I think we're all heading in the right direction. So congratulations once again, and thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate that. It was lovely to be able to see some faces and uh, the names of people I know or know of in that video. And I have to say, um, records management, I think we all know, sometimes gets a bad press and it's not something um, many people decide to do when they're at school. Um, I used to ask my um, students, how did you get into records management? And essentially it was I fell into it it wasn't a deliberate choice but I I think that video you showed us and thank you for showing us that um, is one that um, careers tutors in schools should get a hold of and show because it is really exciting as we online today all know so thank you very much indeed to everybody who's joined today congratulations again to Laura Particular thanks to not only Laura for her remarks, but Anne and to uh, Mike for their remarks too. I think together for something that is not um, a production and rehearsed and edited in the um, back rooms, etc. I think it somehow all gelled and come together very well. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I've um, enjoyed it. Um, so just a few um, final things to say before I, I do a formal close and end the event. Um, a particular thanks to those who've um, joined early, very early, um, in the Hawaiian Islands, and to Dinesh for checking things out with me and being up still after midnight in India. Um, as I say, many congratulations to Laura. And just to say that um, we have things in place to update the Emmett Lee He Ward website, and that will be done in the next, hopefully, 24 hours or so. So if you have got some screenshots, um, please send them to me. We'll put together a, a, a gallery, a, a selection of them, along with the best video recording of the ones we've um, made today. Um, and Preservica are going to um, issue a press um, release and I'd ask you as we are um, on the committee to share through your own uh, news channels, social media and others, um, the great news of this year's 2021 Emmett Leahy Award winner, Laura Miller. So I'll just wish you all the very best, take care, enjoy the rest of your day or sleep well and thanks very much indeed. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for organizing it, Julie. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining. Thanks, I'm going Laura. to end the meeting. Congratulations, Laura. Congratulations, yeah. Laura. Good, good. Absolutely. Thanks very much indeed, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.